Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So, um, today I wanted to make a video kind of following the, um, the last few videos on um, postpartum depression and anxiety. So I wanted to do a video on just depression and what I do to help my depression when I have it um, and just maybe some ideas that might help you um, if you're going through a time in your life where you're struggling a bit. So there is a difference between um, going through a depression because, you know, someone has passed away or there's a huge transition in your life or, life or a huge loss, um, like a divorce or something like that, that those bouts of depression come and usually it's, it's situational, right? So it comes because of a situation that has arise and, um, and yeah, it, it's something that has layers that you have to kind of work through. Um, but this depression that I'm talking about is specifically um, the people that just struggle, that the people just struggle naturally with kind of feeling like blue and a little bit under the weather and just kind of like lethargic sometimes. So like I said in the other video, anxiety and depression are very different. So we've got depression, which is very heavy energy. It's a very lethargic energy. It's very much like, ugh, I... I just, I can't, I just can't face anything or anyone. Um, and it can be very debilitating. It can take away from, if I'm enjoying life um, and, and kind of locking yourself away. So I struggle a lot with um, seasonal depression. So I'm triggered by if we have a lot of gray weather, if it's um, the darkest time of the year is really hard for me. Um, and I think people that, um, that do live in our area, so up in Canada and northern areas, um, it's just the, the sunlight, the lack of sunlight can just be very, very um, hard to get through sometimes. So yeah, so seasonal depression um, as well as, you know, those, those darker days and stuff can really affect me. So what do I do? Um, a few things, the same as um, anxiety, validating it is super important. Um, allowing yourself space to be okay with the fact that you're feeling this way, not beat yourself up about it because that's not going to do any good. It's only going to make it worse. So accepting yourself that this is where, what you're feeling right now, this is what you're going through, um, and you're just feeling really low um, is really helpful. So validating yourself. Um, the other thing is obviously having a support system. Just like anxiety, you need to have a support system so that people know um, that you know you struggle with these things and that when you go into those places, those are the people you're going to call up and be like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm just like really having a tough time. And they're the ones that are going to understand and be there for you and support you and help you to... Um, to get out of the rut and they'll know what to do because you have that connection, like that bond. So they're going to, they're going to know the things that help you. Um, maybe it's just going out for a cup of coffee or maybe it's venting and having a big cry, whatever those things are. Um, a lot of times when we're feeling depressed, like I said, sometimes it can be situational and sometimes it can just be like, you just feel blah. Um, if it is situational and trauma, of course, therapy is huge, um, talking it through, um, releasing some of those things, those painful memories or those painful thoughts, um, can really, really help for sure. Um, but if it is more like a seasonal and you're just kind of feeling blah and you don't really know why and you can't really get out of it, um, there's a couple of things with depression there's a point of sitting with it and being like, okay, I'm feeling this and, and, and not beating yourself up about it, validating it and allowing some space to just feel it. And like I said, with anxiety, making friends with this part of yourself. Um, but the problem is that with depression, if we make too close of friends with this part of ourselves, we get even more into a rut. We'll pull ourselves even more back from, from the people around us and from the world and from everyone else. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. So with anxiety, I suggest separating yourself from certain situations and people, taking a break, coming out of these kind of buzzing situations and kind of um, having that time to come down from it. Um, but with depression, we need to put ourselves not in those, not in an anxious 
situation, but in those situations where we're around people. Um, you hear it time and time again. It's like, oh, I didn't feel like going out, but then I forced myself to go out for coffee with this friend, and I ended up feeling so much better because I got out of that rut, and I got out of that space of just feeling blah and like not wanting to do anything. So with anxiety, I often say separate yourself from people because sometimes it's the people and the things that are going on in life that is just too much, and it could be feeding the anxiety. Um, but you don't want to separate yourself so much so that, you know, you're falling into this kind of isolated depression state. So it's kind of this fine balance. Um, so it is recognizing when you're in that state and being like, okay, you know what? I've been in this state for a couple of days. I've allowed myself some space away from people to feel it, to cry about it, to let it, you know, be what it is. But now I need to go in and take some steps to get myself out and to, to start to socialize with people and start to um, and move the energy a little bit, right? Like the stagnant energy. Um, I talk a lot about that. I have talked about that in blogs and stuff, how we come out of from winter into spring and how, you know, when you're kind of hibernating and um, when I was in Alberta, it was snow for six months of the year and you were stuck inside and there's this kind of stagnant energy. Um, it's the same with depression when you have that seasonal depression coming out of it. It's just like this stuck, stale energy. So really moving that energy and it's going to take some time to get momentum. And then once you get momentum, then you can start kind of almost like flushing it out and finding, finding some, um, motivation to, to get out, to do things, to kind of breathe again. So that is one thing is, validate, allow yourself space to cry, talk it out, find a good support system, give yourself a couple of days of feeling this way, and then try to force yourself to get out and do things. And it doesn't have to necessarily be with people. It could be walking in nature. Nature is so healing. I can't tell you this enough. It is like energy abundance and it heals. It just is. It's just so healing. So go into nature, hug a tree, lay in the sand, go put your toes in the water, whatever you can do, go and do it. Um, obviously, self-care, we talk about this a million times, self-care is so important, so eating properly, resting, um, but not over-resting, you know, and, and, and making time for the things that you love. The other thing that depression can often lead to is feeling like this, this feeling of like, what's the point? Like, what's the point in kind of like getting up and doing anything and like nothing means anything and all this kind of stuff. So, Finding a purpose, finding something that gives you purpose, so something that feels really meaningful for you. And sometimes that could be your job or your career. Sometimes it could be your children if you're a mom or a father. Um, and sometimes it can be volunteering at a homeless shelter or at, you know, some other, like, um, a, what was I going to say, the pets, you know, like where they save the pets, the SBCA. Um, something like that where you're going and you feel like you have purpose. It gives you meaning and you get to see something accomplished. Because um, a lot of time when you're in depression, you feel like you're really like clawing your way through life. And it feels like you're not really getting anywhere. So picking little goals to do and then seeing at the end of the day how you've accomplished those goals can really feel uplifting and really feel like a positive, motivating experience. Um, so it could be as simple as like baking some cupcakes or cakes for, um, so I was going to say cupcakes, but muffins or something for your kids for school. Um, I used to do, when I struggled a lot with like my postpartum and depression and stuff like that, I would put these little goals out of like, okay, today I'm going to like um, go for a walk, make some muffins for the kids and, um, and then sit and read like a couple of pages out of my book or whatever. And just those little things kind of gave me meaning and it gave me purpose and, it, and I was able to see me go from being stuck to um, to finishing something that I could see was concrete, right? So those are other things that you can do is give yourself something, even if it's something small, to work towards um, so that you can see that growth and that you can be proud of that. Um, and, and also recognizing like love and compassion, once again, um, you know, we we do the best we can with the tools we have. So I posted on my Facebook page a little quote about that. It's like, forgive yourself for what you did in survival mode. You know, we only do what we can and what we know. So yeah, like 
forgive yourself if you're not always in the best state, if you're not always um, feeling happy and, you know, wonderful. Um, like someone said to me about fighting depression and um, and those points in your life, those really hard points in your life, it's like the goal is to have more better days than bad days. Um, and if you're succeeding at that, it's okay. It's still okay to have bad days. Even people that aren't depressed or don't struggle with depression are going to have bad days too. So we all experience those ebbs and flows. And, um, and one of the biggest things I have to say that I would tell myself, especially as, as with seasonal depression, is telling myself it won't last forever. Like I would sit there and it'd be so cloudy and gray and it'd be the middle of the winter and I was just like craving this, um, to be able to go outside and I couldn't. And it was so hard, but I remember looking outside one day and, and saying, you know what, the clouds are covering the entire sky, but above the clouds is the sun. So it's right there. It's just waiting for the time to come out. So it's kind of recognizing that even though those gray days, those days where you're just like, oh my goodness, I can't get through the days, just knowing that the sun will rise, that there will be light that follows the darkness. There is going to be that ebb and flow. So just trusting that and holding on and giving yourself purpose and finding those supports is super important. So I hope that gives you some tips to dealing with depression and seasonal depression. And, um, you know, obviously always reach out to a professional. It's so important um, because, you know, when we go down some of these rabbit holes of depression can come in a lot of um, negative self-talk and um, even suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. So always reach out to um, professionals for help and support. Um, and yeah, like there's, there's always lots of natural things and lots of, um, pharmaceutical things and depending on the person will depend on what you need. So I don't like to give advice in that way whatsoever. Um, this is just merely me kind of giving some of those day-to-day -day advice, um, day-to-day -day ideas that you can do just to kind of get yourself a little bit moving a little bit out of that rut and, um, moving in the right direction because nothing feels more, well, both anxiety and depression are very, very isolating. So, um, but yeah, it can feel really, really hard um, when the world around you is moving and you're just kind of stuck. So I hope some of these ideas help you. I'm going to try to do like a blog post on like kind of writing out the tips for anxiety and for depression, um, just to give you guys like a checklist, almost something a little bit easier to look at. Um, and a little bit of a visual. So I will try to get that done some, sometime this week, I'm hoping. And yeah, so I hope this helps someone or supports you in some way. And yeah, I will be back for another video very soon. Lots of love, guys, and we'll talk later.